And of course, you spot the little hidden door. Pull it off. This little icon is for the compressor, it means it's running if it's on. And this is the one for the evaporator fan. Now, pull this front cover off. This one has these little latches, interestingly designed. So once you get that other cover off, this one should pull out. Yeah, this is actually a nice one. High pressure trip lockout alarm. High pressure, what do you know? So it's a lockout alarm, so we should be able to power off, power back on, and it should start. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know why it does that. I'm just gonna go, should go longer each time and then eventually stay on. Unless that switch is messed up. This is a suction pressure, by the way. Doesn't really look too dirty, huh? But So now here we can look closely and see that a layer of dust is now covering just the one side of the tubing right there on the inlet. So for the sake of saying I did it, I'm going to go ahead and clean it. Let's see, what is this switch? This is a, looks like it cuts out at 460 and cuts back in at 325. Something else I like to look at is, um, so it runs nice and perfectly and cool when it's like this, but what happens to it when we push it in? So we'll push it in first. Not only that, but let's see, we have this. This thing goes up there. Alright, so that goes up there. We're already at 157. Then we put this. This is insane. That's crazy restriction. Horrible design. Whoever designed this, they should be ashamed of themselves. No wonder it trips high discharge like that. Let's see. What kind of refrigerant this thing's running. 448. See. 100 and Wow, 170 degrees isn't even on there. Well, that's discharge. Discharge vapor is way up there. Not even on the chart. Critical temperature, 182. One hundred and fifty degrees puts us at 450 PSI. So, what kind of PSI are we running now? I don't know. But I tell you what. No wonder it's tripping.
pretty warm, I'll tell you what. I don't know why the manufacturer would, would design it like that. And then this is what it's supposed to let discharge through. Our sight glass is flashing. I wonder if that's gonna, gonna clear up or what. Oh, look at that, it cleared up. It could be that other technicians have connected their gauges to it several times, multiple times, and it's therefore lost um, a few ounces of refrigerant each time, and nobody has bothered to fill it back up. cooling but we have a sight glass it's not fully liquid what do you guys think about this design i think it sucks so i'm gonna go find a pan to wash this thing hmm. even worse i don't really think this is gonna do us any good because there's nothing even coming out but I had to try. Okay, I rinsed it and like nothing came out. I don't know why they do that. Anybody know why they do that on startup? It takes them like, like four times. I just don't know. pressure we're in a delay <clears throat> there we go Okay, well, I washed it and uh, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. So I'm going to call the manufacturer and I'm going to ask them, what do they want me to do with this? So I did that. I called them uh, the next day. And so what they had me do was on the other side, the discharge air side, they had me flip the the louvers around to where the louvers are facing upward and they told me to take out the little black cover that's on the inside behind the louver so just like the little cover that covers the coil on this side they had me cover or they had me remove the black guard or whatever off of there and then just flip the grill upside down to where the grills face upward and sadly you know that's what we get with these guys we end up getting from the factory a unit that constantly is tripping, high discharge alarm, locking out, a completely unreliable product for the client, and they just can't even engineer it right.